Does my makeup look good? I never know my makeup looks good. I always, because I wear very little makeup now. Like, I remember when I started my channel, I used to wear a lot of makeup, but then I was wearing a lot of makeup at that time, but then, you know, the panini hit, and I don't wear makeup anymore. So, <laughs> I always feel like I fuck it up for the channel. I can never keep these intros short. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about goods and goods, what? <laughs> where I talk about books, I, this is like what I do, I talk about books and things. And today I have an intro to a new secret TBR series that I'm starting. Um, I hope that I will finish it <laughs> by the end of August because I have four books to read. So, you know, this is probably going to be a long video, but yeah. The whole idea of this series, of this, well not this series, of this video, is to read the second book from an author who I've read one book from and I really liked. I'm pretty sure I could have explained that so much easier, but that, that's what we're going with, okay? So I have two of these books in audio and two of them physically, but I'm probably gonna read them in audio format anyway. So let me get this started and introduce to you the books that I'm gonna read. The first one that I want to read is the second book that I'm going to read by um, Sarah Gailey. You all know that I love Magic for Liars. I know this is a very divisive book, but this is one of my favorite books that I've ever read. And I read it in one sitting. So I picked up The Echo Wife, which apparently is a sci-fi. So Sarah Gailey writing sci-fi is i can't i can't even i can't even i'm so excited to read this book one thing i love about sarah gailey this is backwards <laughs> why is it oh no it is not it's it's in the right way so one of the things i really like about sarah gailey is she doesn't take any time explaining to you the world building she just goes straight into the action and you all know how i feel about world building so this is the first book that I'm going to read, or I don't know if it's the first book that I'm going to read, but this is one of the books that I'm going to read um, in the next 10 days, which is just The Echo Wife. Um, I have no idea what this is about. I think there's a murder, and I think that um, this man divorced this woman, and then he cloned her and married the clone, and then the clone kills him, and then she, the clone, calls the original to help her, I don't know, hide the body i mean if you were gonna call somebody to help you hide a body i guess the ex-wife would be the person to call so um i'm really excited to get to this one um i've been i've been holding on i've been holding on to film this video so that i can read it so that's the first book or at least that's one of the books that i want to get to um the next book that i read and i loved and i remember this is i've only read one book by all of these authors so this is going to be the second book um i read as you know the monsters we deserve by marika sedgwick i really loved it this was really lyrical and really strange and dark and eerie and scary and spooky and i have i always want to say okay it's midwinter blood by marika sedgwick and i think this is more of a romantic story i think i think i'm not sure i'm not sure what this is about i like always i never know what my books are about but i'm pretty sure that this is about a place where people meet and like they continuously meet there as lovers in some way as brother and sister as mother and daughter as you know they, they just continue to find themselves in this place and it's just yeah that's all i know <laughs> that's all i know about this book really excited to get to it i love marcus sedgwick again short book very little world building and a lot of beautiful lyrical writing so this is the next book. What do we have next? Okay, the, the other two, I will insert the picture, but I will show you the book that um, got me into the idea of reading it. it. The next one is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. And I have only read The Martian by Andy Weir because I was swayed away from reading Artemis by Andy Weir. I have read The Egg, but that's a short story. It doesn't count, so sh just, sh you know. Um, Hail, Project Hail Mary, I understand, is about this astronaut that wakes up and they don't know where they are or why they're there and they kind of have amnesia and they might be the only answer to saving the world. That's all that I know. I'm really excited to read it. You guys know I, I just, I love sci-fi. I love sci-fi and I know in my last video I said I was a little bit sci-fi'd out but I'm never sci-fi'd out. And 
then the last book I'm gonna read is Faux, which is also a sci-fi. So basically, I'm reading three sci-fis and one, I don't know, literary fiction book. But um, I'm reading Faux by Ian Reed, and it was inspired by this horrible cover. I'm so angry that I didn't get the book when I first read it because I wanted the original cover, the original cover of I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I read this book on a whim. It was on script and I was like, eh, I want to read something quick and I saw this and I was like, yes, I want to read that. And I fucking loved it. I loved everything about it. So I hope that Faux doesn't let me down. I know that Rachel from The Shades of Orange has said that she really likes Faux. So, and I trust Rachel because she knows my taste in books. If you saw my sci-fi um, recommendation videos, she was all like, you have to read We Were We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinkster. You have to read it. And I did, and I loved it. I gave it five stars. So, um, I guess I'm reading four books, but here you have six books. <laughs> I just didn't know how to do it, okay? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, let's see how it goes and I'll update you when I start reading my first read. I wonder what it'll be. It's probably gonna be The Echo Wife. You'll see it in the next clip. I've been reading this book like I'm already on page 80 and oh my god this is The Echo Wife. Sarah Gailey is amazing. Like I I knew what was gonna happen going in, but experiencing it and actually reading it, it's, oh, I love it. I, I love everything about this book so far. Um, I'm not gonna say anything because it's, it is kind of a thriller. Um, I was right with my assumption at the beginning. Um, there's cloning involved, <laughs> somebody dies, all of that was true, but her her writing style just it's perfect for me because it doesn't stop to explain things you just it's like here you're thrown into this world and you're you just she doesn't take you by the hand you're just supposed to understand it and i fucking love it like i think i'm gonna finish this tonight i'm probably gonna stay up to read it because I want to know what happens. Oh my gosh. And I love how Sarah Gailey has this way of writing. Well, in this case, they're not really sisters, but I like, you know, they're, they're clones. <laughs> so, I mean, how closer can you get to a sister than a clone? Um, I like her way of writing relationships between women. It's really good. It's really awesome. I like, I love the main character in this, the main character in this and, and, and how she explains her past and the other character in this, um, the, the clone Martine, I love her. I love every, fucking love everything about this book. It has everything that I want and that I need and I am so happy. Sorry if you can hear the AC going, but this book, I think this book is gonna be the best book of the year for me. It's so good and I can't tell you anything about it because everything is a spoiler and I don't want to spoil you for it. I just, just pick it up, read it. So I'm on page 169 of 254 pages. I can totally, you can't see my husband. I can totally finish this tonight. I want to finish this tonight because I want to know how it ends. Like, I'm so intrigued. This is the thing about Sarah Gailey. Like, her books are so well-crafted. You just want to know what happens. You just want to know where it goes, how it gets there. And again, I just, I'm in love. I'm in utter joy, utter love. I'm so happy. Good morning, everyone. Um, I stayed up until four in the morning to finish reading this book. I was like, I'm not gonna stay up, I'm not gonna do it. And then it was like four in the morning and I was like, I, I finished it and I loved it. Five out of five stars. Sarah Gailey just writes for me. She doesn't do any world building whatsoever, but she writes nuanced, interesting, um, deep, just, yummy characters especially women she writes such good women and i just loved everything about this book i just i can't tell you a lot about it because the twist and the turns that it takes is just that's 
the whole point of the book and I don't want to ruin that for you. I did get it right in the beginning with my synopsis. It's about a clone and a, and a woman and it, the woman's clone and the man leaves her for the clone and then shit hits the fan. And I really love the relationship between the clone and the woman. I really love how we get to see the past of this woman through her interactions and through little things that she does and how, you know, you can be completely genetically the same. And of course, we know this with twins, but with the clone, they are genetically exactly the same, but they can be manipulated to be a little bit different. And, and how those differences are small and yet they're there and it's just, ah, uh, you get swept away into this world that is, com it, it's definitely science fiction, but it doesn't feel like science fiction. I think this is going to be one of those books that I recommend all the time for people that want to get started with science fiction but don't know where to start this is gonna be it like I'm gonna be like just read the Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey <laughs> I'm gonna recommend this all the time I'm so happy this book didn't let me down because one of the reasons I'm doing this series is that I don't normally read books from my favorite authors because I feel that they can never capture the magic of that first book that really drew me in. Like, it, it, I, I actively avoid reading books from authors who I've read a book before that I've loved. Like, I haven't read any Love, Lev Grossman, any Rick Yancey, I hadn't read any Sarah Gailey, and every, every author in this, in this video, I, I actively was scared or refused to read their other works because I was like you can never capture it again you can't you can't get me twice but Sarah Gailey has gotten me twice this is up there for book of the year for me it has that soft sci-fi aspect it doesn't have any world building it's just perfect five out of five stars now today I'm going to the pool so today I thought I should get something that is also small um, I, I think I'm reading these in the order which I think I'm gonna like them. So, um, today I'm taking with me Faux by Ian Reed to the pool. I have the audiobook for this. I'm just gonna sit there when I'm not in the pool and listen to the audio. But to be fair, I'm probably not gonna do a lot of reading. Um, I'm probably just gonna hang out with the people there. And then when I get home, I'll just lay in bed and finish. That book because it's really it's a it's a short book it's a five hour long audiobook and this one was how many hours eight hours I think and I did finish it in one day but then again I was I was hooked I was completely enthralled by it yeah this was eight and a half hours so I did listen to the audiobook um I wanted to read it physically but since I had the audiobook I was just like let's just do the audiobook and see how that goes because I did read Magic for Liars physically and I did finish it in one night so I wanted to see if the audio like if there was anything to take away from the audio I, I think I actually think I'm gonna reread this but in physical format because short books short books are the way to go so I went to the pool and I was so ready to film like you know a little clip of me at the pool and stuff like that that's why my hair is wet and I completely forgot my camera so I forgot my camera but I did start reading Faux by Ian Reid. I just have to say, Ian Reid has this way of writing that really just makes you feel uncomfortable. Like, like it's just so uncomfortable. Like, I, I am not very far in. I think I'm like 10% in. Why do I never know how far I am into a book before I start filming? Yeah, I'm 10% into the book. Um, So far, what I gather is like... Um, like in most science fiction, we've destroyed the earth. Like, I, that, that should be a meme by now. We just destroyed the earth. And there's apparently this lottery. And if you win the lottery, you get to go to outer space to another planet. And there's this couple that live in the middle of nowhere. And there's this man that is like, hey, you won the lottery. But it's only for one of them, not for both of them. So that's what I'm reading right now. Um, so far, this does remind me a lot of, I don't, uh, I think I'm, I'm thinking of ending things. Um, just because the atmosphere is so unsettling. Like everything that is happening is unsettling. I know it seems like I haven't moved. <laughs> it's probably because I haven't moved. I've just been sitting in bed uh, reading. 
faux and I cannot explain to you how uncomfortable I feel reading this book and it's 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 that kind of uncomfortable it's so strange I have never read any other author that makes me feel as uncomfortable as Ian Reed because it's not that uncomfortable of a thriller or gore or something like that it's just you know something unsettling is happening and you don't know what it is but you know that it's there like there is no doubt that something unset unsettling is happening and yet you can't quite put your finger on it you're like what's going on and and it's strange i've never read another another author like ian reed i've i've heard a lot of people on booktube say that Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer made them feel really uncomfortable and also dead astronauts. Um, that hasn't been the case for me. But Ian Reid, it's just my skin is crawling. Like, what is going on? I'm not gonna be finishing one book a day for the rest of this video. <laughs> I just ate that book up. It was so, so good. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how to explain it. But basically, it's, yeah, this couple, they live in this, like, barn, and they have chickens, and, and one of them is chosen to go to space, and the other one has to stay behind. But the caveat is, since they're going for such a long time into space, they get, like, a replica of their spouse to stay with them so that they're not lonely while the other one is in space. It's really weird. I like this more than I'm thinking of ending things. I think this is a better written book than that book. I loved, I just loved everything about it. Like I said, I just read it in one sitting. It's so, so good. It's also really short, that really helps. I don't want you to think that I'm reading 500 page books in one sitting. This is like 287 pages, but it's amazing. I loved it. I gave it five out of five stars and so far the two authors that I've read have not let me down. Their first books were five stars and now their second book that I read from them is five stars. Now I'm kind of scared to read a third book <laughs> from either of them because you know it, it can only go down from here. <laughs> I always get so awkward when I just turn the camera on and I'm like now I'm supposed to talk. <laughs> Winter Blood by Marcus Sedgwick last night and I'm about 10% in and I didn't realize that this was also going to be a soft sci-fi <laughs> like now I'm thinking I should have included Clara and the Sun in here because you know it, it would just be like a sci-fi extravaganza I mean I might still do it we'll see we'll see but <laughs> um, I might add just a surprise book at the end but yeah, um, so far we are kind of like in a not too distant future where there is this technology that if you open it, basically it's kind of like a like a Tinder, but it's not for dating. It's just to see how many connections you have around you. So for example, this man is on an airplane and he opens the app and he sees that, you know, maybe you have somebody in the airplane that went to school with somebody you went to school to and stuff like that. But he's going to investigate this island where they say people live forever and there he has no technology. So he's like a fish out of water because he has no idea what he's doing <laughs> without technology. And the island is really strange, but um, I don't remember his name, but he meets a woman named Merle. And the moment he meets her, he's like, I know you and I'm in love with you, but I have no idea how this is happening. So we have kind of like a love at first sight, but he just, it, it's not as cringy as it sounds because I know love at first sight or insta love is really annoying but like Merle doesn't seem to be in love with him but she does bump into him a lot and um I read like some of the synopsis and it turns out that these people somehow are meeting through time and they just constantly meet and they just constantly I think fall in love I'm not sure if it's fall in love so I've been reading that and I didn't know <laughs> We were gonna have some sci-fi elements into it. I'll be honest, it hasn't absorbed absorbed me as much as the other two books did. I mean, from 
page one of faux and from page one of the echo wife i was there i was i was consumed by the story i'll be honest and say that um maybe it was because of the surprise element to it like i was not expecting it to be like this um maybe that's why i haven't fallen in love with this book yet but it's a really short book should finish it today also i realized i am totally is this still a thing but like i just totally realized <laughs> <laughs> I'm a visco girl now. I only wear oversized shirts over like shorts or sometimes you know these like really loose pants and I constantly am applying chapstick to my lips because I I don't know well I'm sure you've noticed in my videos my lips are always cracked. I don't know why they have always been like that all my life and if you can see here i don't have a hydro flask per se but i do have like a like a hydro flask e thing so the other day my husband was like you're totally a visco girl and i was like I, th I think i am i don't even use visco i didn't know what visco was until like a few like a year ago it was like all over youtube like oh dressing like a visco girl or pretending to be a visco girl for a day and i do have a scrunchie i was gonna put it on just for this video that like like just for this clip but too much <laughs> I've been reading Midwinter Blood for a while now and I am now on part 5 and I just have to say um, I remember when I was like this is kind of sci-fi-ish it's definitely not forget anything I said about it being sci-fi it's just the first story um, this book is <laughs> you have to like how Marcus Sedgwick writes in order to enjoy this book I know that's a weird thing to say because like a lot of people are always like, oh, you have to enjoy this author's writing in order to enjoy their work. But not really. I think some authors just kind of disappear into their work, you know? And that's not a bad thing. I think that's fine. But Marcus Sedgwick, um, from the two books, well, I think I'm like 60% through. I'm on page 170, 170 of 262. So... Yeah, about 60% done. I don't know. I can't do math. But he writes in such a, like, deep, emotional way. It's a beautiful way of writing, and I really love it. It took me a while to get into the story, but once you get into it, it's really beautiful. Again, it's about these two people, Eric and Merle. I remember now, Eric. And they keep meeting throughout their lives, or you know throughout time in in on this island called blessed on this island called blessed and it goes from the the year i think the first one i don't know it's like in the in the in the near future and then from there it goes to the past and 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 i'm guessing we're gonna end up at the very end um yeah at like at the very beginning of humanity and these two souls just keep finding each other and finding each other and i think the end of the story is actually at the beginning and then you go back you know instead of going forward and i think that that's just so beautiful even know what to say this book just blew my mind i i give it five out of five stars that's the third five out of five stars i really hope project tell mary lives up to that expectation but this was incredible if you like literary fiction if you i'm sorry if you can hear the thunder you saw before in the clips before the aesthetic clips that <laughs> it's like raining but this was beautiful this was wonderful i I would urge you not to like look at the cover because the cover doesn't sell this book at all it is precisely what i said before but the writing is just oh marcus sedgwick is so underappreciated on booktube and in book dumb in general 
this book was amazing the ending I was like I was so for the ending and like I said it's like the story starts but you're actually reading the ending of the story don't worry that's not a spoiler because you see how it goes back in time so you know that you know you're you're actually going back to the beginning so it's really cool the storytelling is amazing the way he crafts like all the symbolism in the story is just so good every story like every every lifetime is separated by a, a, a certain moon so there's the um, the fruit moon the hunter moon the grain moon the hay moon etc and those signify like points in time where these two spirits somehow meet up and are separated by some reason and you're trying to figure out what's going on and ah loved it i just i loved it i i i i'll let you wonder whether they get together in the end or not uh but it is it is tragic and romantic and gothic and 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 kind of sci-fi-ish but it's so beautiful 10 out of 10 5 out of 5 100 percent recommend that you pick up Marcus Sedgwick's books in general and especially Midwinter Blood. You are definitely, I'm, I just, I can't. I, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> so, I've been reading Project Hail Mary. I'm about 25% into it. As you can see here, I'm reading it on audio. And I must say that at the beginning, I was lost. <laughs> like, I'm not a science person. For somebody that really likes science fiction, I am so not a science person. I am so happy not knowing how the world works or why things happen. I just, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that person. But I really like the main character. I like the twists and turns that it's taken. Um, I must say that it's really reminiscent of The Martian. The main character really reminds me of Mark Watney. I keep calling him Mark Watney in my head. But um, but he's not. But he's not. He's not. It's just that in my in my head he is. <laughs> and I keep picturing Mark. What is it? No, Matt Damon. The last time I said Mark Wahlberg, I keep picturing Matt Damon as him. I think this would make a great movie. I think that this would be another one of um Andy Weir's books that would make a great movie. So yeah, I decided to bring you to my kitchen today because I always like just do these from my bedroom. But honestly. This is all there is. It's just my kitchen, my bookshelves, that area over there that nobody talks about because it's like cat area and my bedroom. That's my entire house. Well, look at that. We're back in my bed in my room. <laughs> you must think I never leave my bed and you are not completely wrong. I spend as much time in my bed as possible. I love my bed. I'm reading, what is it called? Project Hail Mary and oh man, did it just get good like I was again again this always happens to me I'm like um, you know I'm probably gonna give this three stars three and a half stars and I'm like this is a five star <laughs> something happened I can't tell you what because I don't want to spoil it for you but it's amazing it's amazing I I'm, I'm so into it I'm only 40% into the book I am so 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 excited it's so good it's so good oh my gosh I'm so glad that I picked this book <laughs> I wasn't expecting to cry reading this book but it's really kind of emotional like there's this scene and I just wanted to update you I'm like I'm not fully crying but I really did tear up and I felt like if I kept reading I was just gonna like start bawling like it's oh my gosh <laughs> why does this happen why am I like oh this is only a three star and it's like oh my god I am 56% in and it's already a five star we'll, we'll see how it ends we'll see how it ends I want to see how it ends because the ending is going to make or break this book and I just I want to see how it ends I want to see this through am I gonna read this in one day too am I gonna read all of these books in one day oh I'm loving it loving it loving this book so far just loving it I'm not done but I am 30 minutes from being done and I can honestly say this is so much better than The Martian and The Martian is really good there's a lot of sciencey stuff that I just kind of skim over because I don't it doesn't it goes over my head but 
this is so good i didn't expect this to be this good i thought it was gonna be good but i didn't think it was gonna be this good and i know this is the book that i'm updating you the most about but it's also the longest book so i'm like i have a lot to say but i can't say anything because like from from me like anything that i say is spoiler territory now and i don't want to spoil you because you really have to experience this for yourself okay i'm gonna finish and then i'll jump back here and tell you my thoughts but i'm just like i'm at a part where i'm like it's it's either all gonna go wrong or it's gonna have, have a happy ending and this better have a happy ending because i need this to have a happy ending it's just a lot i did it i finished project hail mary in one day i can't believe i did that I really I'm not this fast of a reader and don't expect this to continue on when I'm like back at work Which should be in a week, but um, I gave it five out of five stars. I absolutely loved it I actually liked it a lot more than the Martian there was there was a lot of science stuff <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. There was a lot of stuff where I was like, yeah, yeah get over it. like I'm not I don't get it <laughs> You know but the story itself and the character, at the beginning, I remember I said, I was like, oh, I'm picturing him like Matt Damon and like he's like uh, Mark Watney. But but then he just becomes his own person. And the, the book does this thing that I usually hate, which is dual timelines. Like you're going present, past, present, past, present, past. But it really worked for the narrative here. And it really helps you understand the character. So I'm not going to say too much. I just... I loved it. I am so happy. <laughs> <coughs> I don't know what's wrong with my voice. I'm sorry if you can hear my dishwasher. I, I totally forgot I was gonna film and I just said it and I was like, you know what? They, they can deal with it for a, a little bit. We uh, made it to the end of this. I read four books by four authors that I had previously only read one book of theirs before and I counted that book as one of my favorite books. Just to recap, the first book that I read was The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. I still think this is my favorite book that I read this um, past week, <laughs> whenever I did the, this past experiment. Um, this is such a good book. Yeah, like I said, it's concise, it's to the point, it has such good characters, the intentions are so interesting and I have to admit even though the ending was not I mean the ending was great but I just I don't, I don't know I wanted a different and I always want different endings but the, it's still the ending was great I loved the ending and I just I love me some Sarah Gailey so for now I have to read a third book hang on I'm trying to hold magic for liars <laughs> So I ha I'm trying to read a third book by her and um, yeah, then she will become one of my favorite authors. I already have her third book on audio, like not her third book, but her first book. I don't remember what it's called. Or I'll insert it right here. Um, but yeah, amazing. The next book I read was Faux by Ian Reid. Um, I absolutely love this book. Like I said, Ian Reid has a way of writing where it makes you feel uncomfortable. Like you're reading and you're like, what's going on? I'm so uncomfortable. And I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it. That is so hard to do. If you've ever tried to write something where you want to make people feel uncomfortable, it's really difficult because, you know, how do you bring that Tension. And Ian Reid completely does that info and I am planning on getting this book right now I'm like on a book buying ban. It's just because you know, I'm, I haven't been working for a month. So Until I, I start I go back to work and get paid. I, I shouldn't be buying anything. So I um, Yeah, I really loved it. I, I love the writing the characters were interesting I love the twist at the end. He always throws like such a fantastic twist at the end and I just loved I loved everything about this book the characters I love that the setting was so remote he always does these remote settings like in the middle of nowhere so like you there's nowhere to turn to and it's great I just I loved it I loved everything about it if you haven't guessed already well if you ha if you haven't seen the video I gave everything five stars <laughs> next I read Midwinter Blood by Marcus Sedgwick and the original book that I had read by him was The Monsters We Deserve now I wasn't expecting this to be sci-fi-ish although it does have sorry I'm sweating so hot 
Um, it does have a sci-fi element to it. It's it's minimal. It's like minimal, and it's only for like a chapter and a half. But it's really good. Um, it, uh, it's again, it's haunting. Marcus Sedgwick writes really haunting books and I found this so haunting so beautifully written so beautifully interlaced like you you know what's happening and yet you see all these red herrings all over the place and it's so so beautiful and so good and 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 you're rooting for the characters you're rooting for them and and when you find out at the end the end you're like please please you know you know, I'm busy now. <laughs> it's so um, beautiful. It's so good. I actually have another Marcus Sedgwick book. So you might see me reading the third one and see if I liked it. And the last book I read was Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Here I have The Martian, the only other book I had read by him. And I gave five out of five stars. It made me cry at some point. I didn't catch it on camera, but I did cry. And the ending again wasn't what I wanted but I was okay with the ending and I loved the story. The science was a little bit much but I find that with Andy Weir you just gotta if you're not of a scientific mind or scientifically inclined you're gonna find his books a little bit difficult to read. Um, but not difficult to read you're just gonna have to like skip <laughs> a little bit or just like you know diagonally read until you get to like okay here's where he explains what he's doing. So I really loved the characters in this book. I loved um, the main character. He was so funny. He was so interesting. Um, I don't remember his first name, but I know his, his last name is Grace. I, I'm really bad at remembering names of people in books. But um, he was so much fun. And I love that Andy Weir puts people who are not supposed to be in certain situations in the situations they're in like for example in the martian we don't get the the main astronaut like i don't know the commander the, <clears throat> the captain of the ship we get a botanist and in this case we get a science teacher trying to save the earth and and um you know being in this in this spaceship and he doesn't even remember who he is in the beginning there's this he, there's so many funny bits, so many bits that made me laugh out loud. Like, this is gonna be one of those books that when, whatever I'm doing, well, like, what book made you laugh? Project Hail Mary made me laugh. So that's it. Those are all the books that I read for this challenge. And what did I learn? I learned that I tend to steer away from reading books by authors that I have already read a book before and that I loved because I always feel that they can only let me down. Like, I mean, I couldn't imagine a better book than Magic for Liars. And I'm not saying that The Echo Wife is better than Magic for Liars. I'm saying that it's as good as Magic for Liars. So maybe I shouldn't shy away from reading books by authors that I have already read something from because maybe I might be surprised. I mean, there's a reason why I like the, the, the book in the first place, like the original book. So maybe they can recapture that magic in the second book. So I'm going to be more open to reading books by authors that I've read before and that I've enjoyed before. Yeah, I'm going to be more open to reading books by the same authors. I'm really happy that I did this. And well, um, let me know who's your favorite author down below. That would be fun. Uh, who is like your auto buy author? I still don't have an auto buy author. Like I'm still not that person that will buy anything anyone writes. Um, even all of, all of these authors, I I'm still hesitant to read another Sarah Gailey book because I'm like, does lightning strike twice? Yes, does it strike three times? I don't know. Without any further ado, I bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye! Is it weird that I'm wearing pink? It's a Star Wars shirt.